I involuntarily hid behind the bushes when I saw a couple sitting on the bench at the back of the school kissing each other like there's no tomorrow. Swallowing up the pain of witnessing my own best friend, Tyler, making out with the only man I've ever loved since I was a child, I couldn't help myself but take a peek again. Their faces are still close. Tyler's hands were on her boyfriend's neck while his were possessively dangled across her tiny waist. I stared at the man who was lovingly looking at my best friend. I've been in love with Quentin Black secretly. He is the man of my dreams. He's an alpha prototype, smart and strong and dashing, but he only got his eyes on Tyler, the hot, intelligent queen bee of the Wolfgar Academy, where I'm also going. And so I've kept my love hidden for years. I can't confess even if I want to because I'm too shy and I know I'll only be rejected in the end. I looked down weakly on the ground and slowly walked out of the area. I can't possibly disturb them, can I? Freya, Freya. With wide eyes, I turned my back to see both of them already behind me. Hey, I said and adjusted my thick glasses. I'm trying my best not to look at Quentin, who looks so effortlessly handsome in his typical outfit of black shirt inside a leather jacket. What are you doing here? Tyler asked and entwined her hand on my arms. Reluctantly, I glanced at Quentin before turning back to Tyler. I was looking for you. I held out a notebook to her. I need to give you the notes for the lecture this morning. You skipped the first class. She hugged me and then kissed my cheeks. You're the best bestie in the world. I love you so much, Freya. You're such a good friend. Quint, babe, do you want to go with us to the canteen? I looked at him expectantly, hoping he would say yes. It's been a while since we have been together. Our families are close because they are business partners. But for some reason, Quentin wouldn't warm up to me. I thought he's snobbish towards girls, not until Tyler came in the picture and smitten him. No, babe. I have classes this afternoon. He pulled Tyler into his arms to kiss her lips. I immediately averted my eyes and tapped my feet. I'll pick you up later for our dinner date. See you, babe. Freya. He finally acknowledged me before running across the football field. I smiled shyly. It felt so good to hear him say my name. Quentin never looked my way, but it's okay. I will love him from afar in my own little ways. I love Tyler as my friend, so I won't do anything to hurt her. We both watched him bump his fist to his friends before proceeding to the cafeteria. Tyler, have you decided to marry Quentin? inquired when we were already eating. She shook her head. No, not yet. I'm actually confused, Freya. I can't choose among the three of them, so I'm taking my time. She answered, referring to the other two brothers of Quentin, Scott, and Lucian, who were both in love with her. Aren't you in love with Quentin? Yes, I love him, but I also love Scott and Lucian. They are also my mates. It's possible that we could have multiple partners. It's difficult, but I could manage them. I could.
Yes, we are going to the Black family's house for a dinner meeting to discuss some important detail. My eyes widened. What are we going to do in Quentin Black's home? But why? Why do I have to go with you? She looked at me as if what I said was the most ludicrous thing she ever heard. And why would you not go? You are our daughter and you are a McKenna. You should be there with us. Here, try this. She handed me the versus black dress. When? Tonight? Yes, Freya. Tonight, so hurry up and get changed. We still have to mix and match your heels and bags. You should be absolutely perfect and pretty when we go there, my daughter. This night would definitely be special. I am quite weirded out by the way my mother is acting, but I just let it slide. She likes to keep things to surprise others, so I just let her be. I don't have the motivation to go, especially when I know that Quentin will not be there. He'll fetch Tyler for their date. I'll leave you here for a little while I get ready too. Please wear makeup, Freya. Standing up, I closed the door and went back into the bed. I laid down instead of getting dressed. Meetings like this don't usually require our presence and it's very rare that they are held in each other's houses. Something special must be really happening tonight, I thought. I changed into my usual get-up shirt, jeans, and sneakers. No need to glam up. I'm quite comfortable in these. Besides, this meeting won't be about me. The whole night, they will only talk about business and business. Freya, what are you wearing? Didn't I tell you to wear a dress? Mom exclaimed, horrified when she saw me descending the steps. You have to change. You must look good and take off your glasses. Use your contact. Grabbing my hand, she pulled me back into my room and forced me to sit on the vanity table. Mom, what is this really for? Can you please just tell me? I told you we're going to a dinner meeting. It's a very important one, so you need to look extra presentable and pretty. She answered while putting on the contacts for me. But I usually go there wearing these. And how important is it? And it's not like I am needed there. I could just stay here in the house. Tonight is different, Freya. You are needed there. Now stop asking already. You're already at your marrying age and you're still acting like a child. Don't worry about anything, okay? We're just doing everything for your sake, my daughter. This meeting will seal your future, Freya. But mom, do I really have to go? She straightened her back, her hands folded on her back. This is her way of showing that her patience is running out. When I say we are going, then we are going. Get your butt ready, Freya. Okay, I softly agreed. Now, darling, be a good daughter and wear this dress for mama. This will make you the most beautiful girl in their eyes. She picked up a red dress for me. With shoulders down, I nodded and started changing. Where's Tyler? I thought you told me Scott is going to pick her in place of me, I asked Lucian, confused when I arrived at the restaurant and didn't see Tyler. Instead, Zane Hunter, an old friend of ours that we didn't quite see for a long time, sat there on the table with a serious expression on his face. Uh, you could date her tomorrow or the day after. Call her to say something came up, he answered, pulling me towards the table where Scott is already seated beside Zane. What? No. I'm calling her right now to tell her I'm coming to get her. But before I could pick up my phone from my pocket, Lucian was quicker to snatch it away from me. Come on, Quinn. We're here to help our old pal first. Seems like he's in the same situation as us. He patted my head and jokingly elbowed my arm. Don't worry. Scott already told Tyler your date for tonight will be rescheduled. Eyeing, I nodded and eyed him suspiciously. Why do I have the feeling that you did this out of spite? Man, you sabotaged me. Scott better informed Tyler right away. I don't want her misunderstanding me. He flashed his wide grin. You can ask him. Now, get your ass moving. I'm famished. I had no choice but to go. Scott told me he already called Tyler. After the food was served, Zane began recounting his dilemma to us. I have a friend, Isabella, who I believe is a mate of my other friend, Ethan, who is already bonded to someone else. They are all my circle of friends, Isabella, Ethan, Enrica, Ethan's mate. I'm the first to notice their attraction towards another, and I don't want trouble to happen, considering they're my closest friends. Since I heard that the two of you shared the same mate with Quentin, I want to hear your opinion in this matter. Quent, what do you think? I chewed the lamb meat and drank the wine first. Let me ask, you got a thing for this Isabella girl? Oh! He denied resoundingly. 
Wow, that was fast. Scott teased while busy scrolling on his phone. You're lying? I swear I don't have a thing for her. Now tell me, Quint, what do you think? Having more than one mate is rare, but it is possible just like in our case. It could be really difficult, especially when the other party involved doesn't want to compromise, but we can't do anything about this. The bond would ultimately draw us to them, no matter what we do, unless the female wolf decided to only accept one mate. Misunderstanding and miscommunication cannot be helped. For an instance, these motherfuckers just sabotaged my date with Tyler. Jealousy is inevitable, but we worked it out along the way. Another- Hey, hey Quint. He interrupted me to show me something on his phone. Have you seen this? What is it? I asked, taking up his phone to read the headline of an article in the business section of a popular online news site. Breaking news. Sources confirm to Daily Mag that bachelor Quentin Black is engaged to be married to Freya McKenna. I was frozen for a second before I was able to react. I blinked thrice and read the article again hoping I was just mistaken. But the words didn't change. It still displayed the same damn thing that I hoped I would never see without Tyler's name beside mine. When the situation finally settled in, it felt like my blood had been drained from my body and pooled into my head. I had the sudden urge to rush over to the kitchen to set the building on fire. I almost broke the phone in my hand had Scott been unable to seize it from me. My blood is boiling in anger. You are what? Lucian exclaimed after reading the article. Pray McKenna. Ray McKenna, right? I remember her. She's Tyler's best friend. What the fuck, man? You're marrying Tyler's best friend? No, I'm not. I don't even know about this. I growled. And I won't marry her. She's not my mate. I won't marry anyone other than Tyler. Hey, wait, what happened? He whispered and snagged the phone to take a look at. Ducks. Um, this is Batman. I heard arranged marriages and disaster. We all looked at Zane, realizing that it was our parents all along. Getting up, I stormed my way out of the place and into my sports car. Quentin. Lucian shouted and climbed inside the driver's seat. I'm driving. You're not in your right mind now. I resigned into the back seat with Scott beside me. Seething in anger, I repeatedly punched the passenger seat until it gave up. Fucking shit! I kept calling Tyler on the phone, but she's not picking up. Maybe she's busy doing her homework. I can't disturb her. My girl is diligent in her studies, so I leaned my head on the backrest, trying to process everything. Tyler will be hurt. Lucian spoke amidst the silence. She loves you the most, Quint. It's actually a good thing. Quint's out. It will only be between you and me, Lucian. Shut up, Scott. You're not helping. While on the way home, I can't help but recall her name again. Freya McKenna, an image of a simple girl appeared in my head, a common face during the dinner meetings. I also always see her with Tyler. How could I not know it? Of course it makes sense now, our parents are business partners. Our families are close with each other, so maybe they thought Freya and I are a perfect match. But I love someone else, which happened to Freya's best friend, Tyler. I'll have no other bride other than her. She will always be the only one for me. But I swear, no wedding will happen. I'll make sure of it. The second I set my foot inside the black man's carefully designed dining area, I knew then that something was wrong. The way Quentin's parents looked at me with admiration in their eyes while scanning my appearance made me more suspicious. I wore the red dress and heels mom picked for me. I had some light makeup on my face. I also had my contacts on instead of my usual old-fashioned glasses. They must have liked my makeover so much, hence their reactions, but a different twinkle in their eyes told me something much deeper is going on. Charlotte Black stood up and welcomed me with open arms. Freya, you looked so beautiful, my child. A child? When did she ever call me one? I know she's such an affectionate mother to their children, but it's the first time she ever called me that way. Thank you, Mrs. Black. I said politely, returning her warm hug. Good evening, Mrs. Black. I greeted Quentin's father, who also hugged me before going to my parents to shake their hands. Where is Quentin? I heard my mother ask Mrs. Blackman when we're all seated on the table. He's coming. My forehead nodded in confusion. And why is she asking for Quentin? Why do we need his presence for a dinner meeting unless realization came like a crashing doom towards me? The thought practically nailed me to my place. 
no, it can't be. Are they planning to? I wasn't able to complete my thought when an angry Quentin stormed into the room carrying a magazine and threw it on the table, confirming the abominable decision. I gasped when I saw what's on the cover. It's me and Quentin and the headline. Oh God, we are getting married. Mom, Dad, can you please explain to me what this is? His chest was heaving in an uncontrolled fury. His face and neck were red in frustration. We will handle this. Charlotte assured my parents, who sat there, understanding in their eyes. Quentin's son, what's written in that magazine is true. You are going to marry Freya. She calmly said, What? No, I'm not marrying Freya. I did not agree on this. How could you do this behind my back? You can't just meddle with my own personal life when you know I already have a mate. I love Tyler, and she is the only woman I am going to marry. His words stung my heart that I can't help but to curl my fists into a ball to prevent my tears from forming. It's obvious that he doesn't like me. The thought of marrying me disgusted him. Am I really that ugly in his eyes? Quinn, calm down. His mother insisted. Yes. Let's talk about this through. Calm down. Mom, I can't just calm down when it's the future of my life that's at stake here. You're right. It's your future that we needed to consider. That's why we decided to marry you off to Freya. But how about what I want? My feelings. You did not consider that. Quentin, I did not raise you to disrespect us in front of our guests. Behave yourself. Mr. Blackman rose in his seat. The families have agreed. You will do so in accordance with the agreement. I will not hear any of this. Go and have a seat. No, I won't, Dad. I won't marry anyone other than Tyler. You can't make me. That's final and no one can change my mind. He walked out of the room in the same pace that he walked in, leaving us all in silence. Charlotte sighed while Mr. Blackman slowly went back to his seat. My father cleared his throat and drank water while Mom held my hands from under the table and squeezed them together. It's okay, Freya. His reaction, it's only normal. I know, Mom. I know. Of course I understand him. I bleed for him and my best friend, Tyler. I would be just as furious as him if I were in his position. I'm sorry for that commotion you have to witness. Charlotte apologized. I think we can all agree that this is something we, his parents, need to push him more. She turned to me. Freya, don't worry. Quentin is just confused. We'll talk this out to him when he is calm enough to accept reason. I get that he's in love with Tyler, but she is not good enough for him. She's not a perfect match for him. I'm his mother, so I can see that. I know Tyler isn't right for Quentin, given the number of situations where she has openly, selfishly chosen other people and events than Quentin. She gently patted my hand and smiled reassuringly. You, Freya, you are Quentin's perfect match. You are the only perfect bride for him. You two would be perfect together. Give him ample time to connect with you, please. I'm sure, given your personality, he will like you. Am I really his perfect match? Will he really like me enough to agree to marry me, judging from his reaction earlier? My hunch was right, he will never like me. I thought, I'm immune to being ignored by Quentin, but when he never for once bothered to glance at me, I felt ripped to pieces. That's how he strongly hated this engagement. I'm ashamed of myself because no matter how hard I refuse to admit that I don't want this wedding to happen, hope springs up from within me. My heart, who quietly yearned for him for years now, started beating erratically. Charlotte shifted in her seat and took out a planner. Now, let's proceed to the planning for the engagement party next week, shall we? But Charlotte, isn't it too soon?
Quentin already agreed to this marriage, Freya. He knows engagement and other gatherings are needed prior to the wedding event. And didn't you hear what Charlotte said? They'll talk to him. Don't worry, darling. Quentin's a good boy and son. He'll do this for his parents and the family. My mother's right. He will do it out of obligation of fulfilling his grandma's last wish. Quent is not the type of man who backs out. I should be glad to know this, but the thought is heavier to bear. His duty to the family is the only thing that pushes him to do this. Well, what am I thinking? That he'll marry me because he likes me. That's just wishful thinking. Pretty drained because of overthinking things. I shut my mouth and didn't argue anymore. Yes, it's done. Now give me a smile, Freya. Smile. I am obliged. So I gave her one. No, give me a natural smile. Don't tell me you'll smile like that later during the photo shoot. I relaxed my face and smiled naturally. There. You look so pretty, my darling. She glanced at her wristwatch. You have to change into your evening gown. We're about to start. Excuse me. I'm called to an attending woman on the terrace of the Black's mansion. Our engagement photo shoot will be held on their wide lawn. Yes, ma'am. Please take Freya to Quentin's room. She needs to change. Yes, ma'am. Miss McKenna, this way, please. Mom, I cried out horrified, trying to mask both my worry and excitement. Excitement because I will be able to see Quentin's room, but worried as well that he'll take it as an invasion of privacy. What? What? But mom... Go. Now. She pushed me to the attendant who's waiting, so I have no choice but to follow her. Miss McKenna, this is Quentin's room. I'll just be here outside waiting for you. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. With my heart on the pit of my stomach, I slowly entered his room. His large black bed is the first thing that greeted me. His room's design is very minimalistic. That matches his personality. I began undressing, quickly feeling a bit uncomfortable by my skimpy little black underwear that my ever-supportive mother bought for me. Facing up on time because he might walk in on me at any minute. I held up the hem of the gown ready to slip through my legs, but the door suddenly opened, revealing Quentin in front of it. Mortified, my eyes widened when he entered and saw me in the middle of his room, by the side of the bed with almost nothing on. No one was able to utter a word or make a move. He just stood there looking at me while my hands froze in the air. Our eyes met and I wished at that moment that the ground would open and swallow me up. I saw him gulp while his eyes roamed around my body, his sight particularly landing on my bosom half exposed by my lacy bra.
even by people who don't know you. It's okay. I managed to smile to persuade him that it's really all right on my part. It's okay. He repeated my answer in a taunting manner. How about our families? Our reputation, the businesses, the merging? Maybe it's okay for you, but it's not for the entirety. He bowed down my head and fidgeted. That didn't cross my mind because all I am thinking is his feelings and Tyler's, but you love her, you want to be with her. He didn't answer. Quint went silent for a moment before I heard him respond, and it's not something that I predicted. I did not expect you to tell me this. I thought you're just the typical obedient child who will do everything her parents say. I never took you as someone who can break her family's order just because it'll hurt me and Tyler. I care too, you know, I said in a small voice. What good is it for the families if we hurt you? Please, let's break off this wedding. I begged him. Please say yes, Quentin. Reject me once again or else. I would hope for a future for the two of us. I would imagine things with you. I would wish for the impossible things you can give me like your heart. I would like to covet your love. My alpha, he shook his head in defiance. No, I cannot. I'm a black Freya. Blacks don't go back on their words. I gave my word to our parents. I'm going to stand by it for the rest of my life. But you love her, I insisted, trying to reason with him. It was also the last straw to remind myself that he will never be mine. We are only bonded by responsibility, not by affection. My feelings don't matter. He gestured towards the mansion. Come on, they'll be looking for us. We need to finish the shoot. I have no choice but to comply. Mr. Black, can you please hug Mems? Freya from behind and put your hand on her waist. The photographer instructed when we're back in the shoot. May I? He asked, looking at me for permission. I nodded. You may. His muscular arm encircled my waist and his head rested on the space between my neck and shoulder. My heart skipped a beat when his lips touched my neck. I'm sorry. He apologized, pulling away. It's okay, I said, my heart aching for more. Perfect. Now, can you two tilt your heads towards each other as if you're about to kiss? Mm hmm Would it be okay if... It's okay. Do it. I turned to my right and positioned my face just enough to show the camera that I'm kissing his head. A look of love, please, Mr. Black, Miss Freya. Unconsciously, I gazed at Quentin with all of the love in me. Yes, very nice. And that's it. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Wait, wait, Charlotte protested. Is that it? For last pose, can we request the couple to kiss? Great idea. My mom, supportive of Charlotte's plan, even winked at us. Mom, we both cried in unison, astounded by what their demand. What? You two are getting married. You're a couple, so give us a kiss. This is Black again. Our eyes met and we both averted at the same time. He cleared mm. his throat while I held my chest that's about to drop down to my gut. Okay, let's just get it done with it. Quentin said in resignation. I'm sorry again, Freya. I promise it'll be quick. He cupped my face with his big hands and cautiously lowered his lips to mine. I closed my eyes and waited for him. He didn't keep me waiting. The kiss is like a breath of fresh air in a humid summer. His mouth settled over my parted lips, gently, barely even moving. Just nibbling, like taking a small sip from a fountain. And I discontented, wanted for more, if Quint agreed to call off the wedding, I would have pushed back all of my delusions under the rug and locked it away just like what I did best for the past years of cuddling my hidden love. I'd been good with it. In fact, I thought there would never come a time when I would open Pandora's box. But the opportunity is knocking on my door. A chance to let loose of my feelings and make him feel how I love a person. They took the matters into my hands. His hot breath, his taste, made me lose control of my hands before I could stop myself. I wrapped my arms around his neck and opened my mouth, fully deepening the kiss. And I tiptoed while I angled my face to give him more access, nudging him to kiss me more. My nose flared in euphoria as I smelled the sweetest scent that I've ever smelled in my whole existence. Ecstatic, I moved my tongue in between his closed lips, wanting to feel more of him, but Quentin didn't let me. He didn't return any of my kisses. He pushed me abruptly away from his body, wiping his mouth as if wanting to erase the feeling of locking lips with me, trying to erase my kiss. He didn't enjoy the kiss. He is obviously shocked by what I did and disgusted by it. And suppressing the sudden buildup of pain, 
in my chest and the shame after initiating that kiss, I looked down and searched for something interesting on the ground. I think you already got the shot. That would be enough. Went and coldly remarked. Apologies, but I need to go somewhere important. Without even throwing me a look, he left me and the scene in a hurry. I would have fled away too had my mother not approached me and rubbed my back. It's okay, Freya. You just did what we asked you to. Come on, let's get you changed. What did I do? Oh gosh, what did I do? Quentin is mad, I can tell. Of course. Who would not be mad when you are kissed passionately by the same woman who wanted to call off the wedding saying she doesn't want to hurt you and your girlfriend? You shouldn't have done that, Mom. Can you please just stop upsetting Quent? Can't you see you're really hurting him? Stop pairing me with him when both of us know he's in love with my best friend. He will never love me. He's just tied to this agreement. He doesn't even see me as a woman. She held my hand tightly, sorrow and understanding in her face. Oh, I'm sorry, Freya. Are you mad at me, darling? No, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at myself. Excuse me, I said in a quivering voice before I ran away. What the f-